The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Didn't Sophocles say... The gods hate utterly the bray of bragging tongues. And haven't we also been taught that pride goeth before destruction? Certainly, the prophets and the sages and the poets have had enough to say about the besetting sin of pride. Why, then, is pride so prevalent? The subject intrigued Mark Twain so deeply that he created one of the deadliest stories about pride ever written. mystery drama, The Man That Corrupted Hadleyburg, was adapted from the Mark Twain classic, especially for the Mystery Theater, by Sam Dan, and stars Fred Gwynn. I'll be back shortly with Act One. According to Mark Twain, you could cheat just about anybody. Back along the turn of the century, there was a town called Hadleyburg, which advertised itself as the most honest and upright place in the world. Incorruptible Hadleyburg, envied by its neighbors. And yet, one day, untainted, irreproachable Hadleyburg fell from grace. How did it happen? May I introduce you to Jack Halliday? I knew it would happen one day, and I said so, but nobody listened to me. After all, I was only the editor of the Hadleyburg Gazette, and it was a paper that lost money. So what did I know about anything? Anyhow, putting the story together, here's what happened. One night, old man Richards, who works at the bank, he's one of the 19. I'll tell you who they are later. If I have to stop to explain everything at the beginning, I'll never get started. Well, old man Richards and his wife Mary are having supper. Edward, I know you're tired, dear, but you must have your supper. I'm not hungry. I'm, I'm so clear worn out. You know, Mary, it's hard to be poor at our time of life. Grinding away at a salary, another man's slave. Oh, but Edward, we have our good name. Yes, yes, and that's everything. Don't mind my talk. It's just a moment's irritation. It doesn't mean anything. Who's that? Someone's at the door. Who would knock at this hour? You sit, Edward, and finish your supper. I'll see who it is. Who is it, Mary, dear? What? That's strange. There's no one here. But we distinctly heard someone knock. <gasps> Edward. What is it? Come here, quickly. Edward, look. Look at what? On the doorstep, the, this bundle. It's a sack. Oh, what does it mean? It means someone left a sack on our doorstep. Yes, but what for what reason? Well, let's bring it inside and find out. Here, let me. Oh, Mary, I, I, I can't lift it. Oh, well, now what do you suppose can be in it? There's a piece of paper attached to it. Uh, here, let me... Put on my spectacles. Yeah. Oh, Edward, what does it say? It says, uh, to be published or the right man to be sought out by private inquiry, either will answer. This sack contains gold coin weighing 160 pounds and four ounces. Oh, Edward. Help me. Help me drag it inside. Oh, mercy on us. Uh, quickly. Uh, shut, shut the door, Mary. Oh. Lock it. Oh, my. Oh, Edward. What do you suppose? The, the, the paper. The paper. There's more written on it. Oh? I, I was a gambler. A ruined gambler. Oh. Hmm. I 
arrived at Hadleyburg late at night, starving and in rags. I begged for help, and I luckily begged of the right man. He gave me $20. He also gave me life and hope. I returned to the gambling table. Oh, Edward, who would have given a stranger $20? I became rich, and I remembered a remark he made. It gave me the inspiration to reform, and I have. I don't know who that man was, but I want him found, and I want him to have the money in this sack. Oh, Edward, can you imagine how much money there is in there? I would find him myself, but I cannot remain here. But this is an honest, incorruptible town, and I can trust you folks to help me. Well, how can we help? The man can be identified by the remark he made to me when he gave me the $20. Oh? Please publish or reveal what I have told you so far to anyone who you think might be the right man. If he says, yes, I was that man, and the remark I made was such and such, open the sack, and inside you will find a sealed envelope with the remark. If he has made the correct statement, give him the gold. Oh, can you imagine, Edward... All that gold. You may publish what I have revealed to you in your local paper and add the following instructions. Thirty days from now, let the candidate appear at the town hall and hand his remark in a sealed envelope to the Reverend Mr. Burgess and have the Reverend Mr. Burgess destroy the seals, open the sack, and verify the remark. Someone in this town befriended a stranger, gave him twenty dollars, and now... And, and, and now... And now that man who set his bread afloat upon the waters shall become rich. Oh, Edward, was was, was it... Uh, well, was I that man? <laughs> uh, was I that benefactor? Yes. Uh, no, Mary, no. Oh, well, just as well. We could never accept that gold anyway. It was gambler's money. We must make the inquiry public. All the other towns will be sick with envy, because no stranger would ever trust such a thing to any other town but Hadleyburg. Uh, let me run over and tell Jack Halliday. I didn't believe him till I came running back to the house with him. And there was the sack, and there was the letter, just as you've already heard it. Well, you remember I said Edward Richards was one of the 19? Sure. There are 19 leading citizens of Hadleyburg. Ed Richards is the least of them. The poorest, the most unimportant. He just about makes it under the wire. Well, these 19 set the tone and spirit of Hadleyburg. The 19 uncorruptibles. Just keep them in mind. Well, I said to Ed and Mary Richards, let's get this money right over to the bank and have old Pinkerton put it right in the vault. And we roused him out of bed, and he did it. And the whole town turned out. Everyone became so excited. <laughs> you can imagine Anyhow, poor old Edward Richards finally went home. I think I know who that man was, Edward, who gave the stranger the $20. Hmm? Barclay Goodson. Yes. Yes, you may be right, Mary. Mm -hmm. It would have been like Barclay. May he rest in peace. Do you remember what he said about this town? It may have been honest, but it was narrow and self-righteous and stingy. And I remember how he was hated for it, too. I guess he was the best hated man around here, except for Reverend Burgess. Former Reverend Burgess. Hmm. Wait. Doesn't it seem odd that the stranger should have appointed Reverend Burgess to deliver the money? Mary, Burgess isn't a bad man. Oh, nonsense. He would still be a minister if he It hadn't... was all because of the rumor of his being with that woman. Well, he was guilty. No. No, Mary, he wasn't. He was innocent. Edward, what are you saying? Mary, I was the only man who knew he was innocent. What? I could have saved him, but... Well, do you know how wrought up the whole town was? It would have turned everyone against me. I just didn't have the courage. I... Oh, I see. I have another confession, Mary. When there was talk of riding him out of town on a rail, I... Well, I... Sneaked over to his house and warned him to leave until things cooled off. Oh, Edward, if anyone has found out... It scares me yet. Everybody thought it was Goodson who warned him. And when folks started to mumble about him, <laughs> Goodson buckled on his forty-five and invited them to state their case to his face. Oh, that was just like Goodson. The way it was like Goodson to give that $20 to a tramp. 
Hmm? Why are we so sure it was Goodson? It couldn't have been anyone else. Oh, why didn't we keep the gold? Mary. Why didn't you realize that we could never find the right man because he's dead and buried in his grave? Do you realize what As you long just... as the money would go to someone who needed it as badly as we do, who would have been hurt? You know how we've been raised, how, how we've been shielded against all temptation, so it's absolutely second nature not to hesitate for a moment when an honest thing has to be done. Oh, I know. But it's an artificial honesty and as weak as water when temptation really comes as we have seen this night. Mary, there's no use oh, going... Oh, Lord knows I never had any doubt about my indestructible honesty. Until this minute. Now, dear, you mustn't go on this Edward, way. I know exactly what you're thinking right now. You do? You are thinking. If a body could only guess what the remark was that Goodson made to the stranger. Yes. And I feel ashamed about it. Well, that's what I'm thinking myself. Mm. If only we could guess. Maybe we don't have to guess. What? We're all creatures of habit, Edward. Yes, I suppose that's... You can almost predict what a person would say in a given situation. Now, take Mr. Pinkerton, the banker. Suppose a beggar were to ask him for charity. What would he say? <laughs> Why isn't an able-bodied man like you gainfully employed? Exactly. Now, think of Goodson. What were some of the things Goodson used to say? But, Mary... Think. Now, think, what were Goodson's best-known remarks about... Charity, for instance. Mary, even if I could remember, that's no guarantee that Goodson would have made the exact same statement on this particular night. Would it do any good? Yes. Because then you would write it down on a piece of paper, seal it in an envelope, and hand it over to the Reverend Mr. Burgess. And suppose... Uh, suppose Mr. Burgess then breaks open the seal, and it comes out that what I claim he said wasn't the remark at all. Well, nothing ventured... Nothing gained. Do you realize the whole town will be there? The, 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 the whole county? The whole state? We... we uh, I, I would be disgraced. Oh, you could brazen it out. Mary, I'd be terrified. The money. Oh, the thought of all that money is driving us out of our minds. Mary, why don't we just go to sleep? Sleep? Oh, oh, are you going to be able to sleep? You know what we're going to keep asking ourselves? Yes. <laughs> yes. What could he have said? Yes. What could Goodson have said to the stranger? What could he have said? I was also sure it was Goodson. Goodson had to be the benefactor. But what did he say to the stranger? Well, if you think that only Edward and Mary Richards were plagued by the question, let me tell you, they had plenty of company. No one was getting any sleep in any of the houses of the incorruptible 19. For instance, Lawyer Wilson. What could he have said? Hay, feed, and grain merchant Wilson. What could he have said? Go down the list. Robert Titmarsh, Ella Fallett Weeks, Archie Bald, Bill Cox, Ingoldsby Sergeant. What could he have said? What could he have said? What could he have said? It was the only topic of conversation. The 19 incorruptibles, starting with Banker Pinkerton on top and ending with poor Edward Richards on bottom, walked about with white and drawn faces as if each of them was feverishly figuring out a way to get at that money. A head of steam was building higher and higher and fiercer and fiercer. Sooner or later, it would have to bust. And it did. You know perfectly well that what we have here is a situation where an irresistible force is about to encounter some highly movable objects. Incorruptible Hadleyburg is in for a workout. Is Mary Richards correct in her analysis? Will the town's reputation collapse under its first real test? It may. It may not. Just wait here till I return with Act Two. Why do you 
you climb a mountain? Because it's there, is the usual answer. And in this case, the simplicity of the reply contains a universal truth. Nature abhors a vacuum. The very fact that something exists can motivate someone to do something about it. Here you have Mark Twain's town of Hadleyburg. It has a reputation for honesty. This fact by itself is enough to inspire someone to try to destroy the reputation. Jack Halliday continues our story. I wish I could tell you what went on in Hadleyburg as the weeks went by, and that fateful Friday drew near. Everybody from Hadleyburg was walking around with a long face. Everyone agreed that the benefactor had to be Goodson. But one thing kind of intrigued me. Why was Reverend Burgess named as the judge or referee or whatever? Burgess, who'd been treated so shabbily by the town. Could all this be a trick on Burgess's part to get even? Reverend, I think I've been your friend. Yes, Jack, you have. How do you figure in this sack of gold business? I have no idea. When Goodson was alive... You two were close. Well, I suppose we were kindred spirits. Reverend, you know more than you're telling. I'm convinced of it. Why is everyone so sure the benefactor is Goodson? Well, who but Goodson would give a stranger $20? Oh, now, wait, 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 wait. You would, Reverend Burgess. You would. Well, for that matter, Jack, so would you. Well, where would I ever get $20? <laughs> If you had it, you'd give it away. And for that matter, so would poor, timid little Edward Richards. <laughs> Think about it. I thought about it. And the more I thought, the less sure I was of anything. Meanwhile, as I found out later, the mailman had been to the Richards' home and left behind a letter. And what a letter... Dear Mr. Richards, I have just returned from Europe and heard about the event in your town of Hadleyburg. You don't know who made that remark, but I do. It was Goodson. Ah, do you see, Edward? We were old friends. That night I passed through your town and Goodson waited with me at the railroad station. Some tramp approached him and asked for a handout. I saw him give the man the money and I heard what he said. Edward... Why would this man write... After the tramp left, Goodson and I talked till my train arrived. He mentioned practically all of his fellow townsmen, and I could tell he actively disliked most of them. Oh, that does sound like Goodson. He did mention your name as a rare exception. Oh? He said you had done him a good turn once, and that possibly you may not have realized the full value of it. What was that, Edward? He said he wished he had a fortune so that he could leave it to you. Well, then, in that case, if you really did him that service, you are his legitimate heir and are entitled to the gold. Oh! I trust to your honor and honesty as a citizen of Hadleyburg. I will reveal to you the remark that Goodson made. This is it. You are far from being a bad man. Go and reform. Very truly yours, Howard L. Stevens. Oh, Edward, the money is ours! Mary. Mary, did... Do you realize I'll have to tell a lie? What lie? I'll have to claim that I was the one that gave the $20 to the stranger. Oh, that's a technicality. Edward, you read what this Mr. Stevenson said. Well, you do deserve the gold, and, and so... Oh, it, and, it, and why do I deserve the gold? Why? Because, as Mr. Stevenson pointed out, you did Mr. Goodson a good turn once. No. What do you mean, No. I don't remember ever having done Goodson a good turn. Oh, come, you're always helping people. No, I remember. I did Burgess a, a good turn, but not Goodson. I never had anything at all to do with Barclay Goodson. I was afraid to be seen with him. Oh, think. No. No, I, I didn't. Oh. Mary, I know all this honesty Hadleyburg brags about is a fraud, but <laughs> I'm too old and I'm too tired and maybe I'm too frightened to change my ways. And, and I just... Won't have anything to do with it anymore. Edward! No, it's my very last word on the subject. Well, that's how it was at that point with Ed and Mary Richards. That letter bore an out-of-state postmark. 
But do you want to know something extremely interesting about that letter? It came in 19 copies. 19. And that letter was delivered to 19 homes in the village of Hadleyburg. Each and every one of the 19 incorruptibles received it. Dear Mr. Wilson, I have just returned from Europe. Dear Mr. Wilson, that night I passed through your town. You're far from being a bad man. Go and reform. Good morning, Jack. Well, Mr. Bilson. Uh, uh, Jack, I've been thinking. I, I I don't advertise enough. I agree. I always held if you sell hay, feed, and grain, folks will come and buy what they need anyhow. But now you've changed your mind and uh, you won't advertise. Yeah, you guessed it, Jack. What's gotten into you? Well, we got all those strangers in town on account of uh, you know what. Wilson, what's really on your mind? Uh, Jack, uh, the reporters keep asking me questions about myself, you know. And? Uh, well, I, 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 I don't know what to tell them. Well, just tell them the truth. Well, I do. But it sounds kind of stuffy. I guess it was. Yes. So, uh, what I was thinking, Jack, was that you might write me a kind of... Short autobiography. Nelson, you're an old fraud. Oh, Jack, you know all about me, and I'm willing to pay you. All good. right, Nelson, but I'm warning you. I intend to get to the bottom of this. Jack. Ah, but there's no Royal Wilson himself. Your old rival, Bilson, was just here. Hey, really? Now, what can I do for you? Well, uh... Do you want me to write your autobiography? Uh, no, not at the moment, Jack. I, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I want to arrange for some advertising. Well, I believe it isn't ethical for lawyers to advertise in this state. Oh, well, I, uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't dream of advertising my law practice. Oh, you wouldn't? Well, uh, what would you advertise? My intention of running for the state senate. Say that again. I said I intend to run for the state senate. Oh, come on, Wilson. Who'd vote for you? I have every prospect of victory. You're the most unpopular man in town. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think I think people will be eager to vote for me. Oh, do you? Well, why on earth should anyone even dream of voting for uh, you? Now, now, how much does a full page cost? I've never seen such a change in the atmosphere. Everybody walked around with a smile. Everybody seemed to have a new lease on life. That is, everybody among the 19 Hadleyburg incorruptibles. Why, even Mrs. Inglesby Sargent, who came in to give me the full information on a church supper, seemed to be bursting. And don't forget to write, Jack, that everyone is to bring a covered dish. I never forget. Uh, Jack... Uh, I'm thinking of ordering some special cards. Oh, uh, yes? Uh, you know the Sheridan Mansion? Well, I think I've finally convinced Inglesby to buy it. Well, that would uh, take a lot of money. Oh, that's not going to be a problem very much longer. Oh, it isn't? Why not? Oh, that would be telling. Uh, uh, Jack, a simple, tasteful engraved card to read uh, Mr. and Mrs. Inglesby Sargent at home. At number one, Sheridan Place. Oh, do you suppose we could change the name of the square to Sergeant Place if we own the property? I know how much money it takes to buy that mansion, and if you've got all of it, you can afford to do anything. It made no sense at all. I couldn't account for it. What was the sudden outburst of sunshine and roses among all the 19? Bright plans, extravagant spending... Had all these people lost their minds? Only one person seemed unchanged. Edward Richards. Mary, leave me in peace. Edward, no, the money is rightfully ours. But I keep telling you, I didn't do any service at all for Goodson. And I keep telling you, it may have been some tiny, picky thing that you can't even remember. Don't weaken my resolve. Goodson befriended a stranger in the presence of a witness. Mary. And in so doing, he made a remark. The witness, a friend of Goodson's, remembering that Goodson felt kindly to you, wants to do you a good turn. Now, that's all there is. Uh, I could believe it. I I could accept it if... If what? 
If I could ever remember doing Goodson a good turn. Oh, Edward, you must have. What? How? Well, things are, are relative. Oh, please, Mary. Oh, did you ever say hello to Goodson on the street? Well, of course. Well, that's a good turn. That's the... the did the... most people ever greet Goodson? Smile, say hello, tip their hats, shake hands, or stop to chat? Hardly anyone. No, I didn't either. I, I just... Yes? I just smiled and nodded. And that was enough. Oh, don't you see, Edward, that little bit, Mary. as Goodson said, you wouldn't know the value of it. Now, who else would say hello to Goodson? Oh, Edward, can't you see the hand of providence? Oh, come, dear, write. Write, you are far from being a bad man. Go and reform. Mary, do you think I should? I think you should. And you think you should. Now, all we need is the paper, the pen, and an envelope. Yes, indeed, that's all you need. People do become a bit erratic, not to mention unhinged, at the prospect of a fortune in gold, or anything else, for that matter. Well, here goes incorruptible Hadleyburg. Can we salvage anything? The cleanup begins when I bring you Act Three in just a few moments. You are far from being a bad man. Go and reform. Such a phrase is worth in the neighborhood of $40,000, which may be small potatoes today, but it was certainly a bumper crop about 80 years ago. The question is, how many people know that phrase, and how many of them are willing to utter it? For this information, we need to hear from Jack Halliday, the local editor. The town hall never looked finer. The place was festooned with all kinds of flags and bunting. You'd think it was the 4th of July. The sack of gold sat on a table in the center of the stage, and it made mouths water all over the house. Finally, Mr. Burgess was introduced, the Reverend Mr. Burgess. Everyone in town loved him now, and he spoke without rancor, as if nothing had happened. Ladies and gentlemen, I have here in my pocket an envelope. Mary, I'm scared. What's to be scared Which about? Which I shall open. And here is the letter inside. Mary. Mary, not on blue paper. I, we didn't use blue paper. And it reads as follows. The remark which I made to the poor distressed stranger was, you are very far from being a very bad man. Go and reform. Signed, Jeremiah Bilson. What? Mary, Mary, did you hear something? Order, order, please, order. I see that Mr. Wilson is also on his feet. Why do you rise, Mr. Wilson? Because you call my name. No, sir, no, no. I read the name Bilson, which is signed here. I, Jeremy Bilson, signed that letter. You, Wilson, are a liar and a fraud. I'm the one who befriended that poor stranger, Mr. Chairman. I wrote you a letter myself. I, William Wilson. Well, uh, just, just, just a moment. It, it seems I have another envelope in my pocket. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's mine. All right, all right, then. I shall read it. The remark I made was... You are far from being a bad man. Go and reform. Signed, William Wilson. He's lying. Uh, Mr. Burgess. Mr. Burgess. Order, order, please. Mr. Burgess. Mr. Burgess. Mr. Burgess. The, the, the chair recognizes Jack Halliday. Uh, both of them couldn't have made the same remark. Both of them didn't. Mr. Bilson said, you are very far from being a very bad man. Wilson said, you are far from being 
A bad man. No, very. Therefore, you should open the sack, sir, and read what the test remark is. Very well. With your permission, ladies and gentlemen, I hereby break the seals and open the sack. Mary, Mary, what have we done? Do you suppose he has our letter in his pocket? I, uh, I find here two envelopes. One is marked the test remark. On the other it says not to be opened until all written communications addressed to the chair have been read. Let's hear the test remark, Mr. Burgess. <clears throat> This is what the benefactor claims he said. You are far from being a bad man. Go and reform. That settles it. That's exactly what I said. And Bilson is a liar and a fraud. And I'll but, tell you but, how... But, to... Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, you're out of order. No, no, no. I insist. I am the man who befriended the stranger. I know what I said. I was in my office writing this note to you, Mr. Burgess, when Bilson came in on business. And he may have seen the note on my desk and therefore... That, that's an infamous lie. Yes, and he couldn't even copy it correctly. Order, gentlemen, yes. order. Neither of you has quoted the remark correctly. Order, order, please. The full remark is... You are far from being a bad man. Go and reform. Or, oh, mark my words, someday for your sins you will die and go to hell or Hadleyburg and try to make it the former. <laughs> that's, that's the hallmark on it, eh? Order! Order! Uh, Mr. Chairman! Mr. Chairman! Two out of 19 incorruptibles have succumbed to temptation, I think. Our fair town of Hadleyburg now has a new image. I won't sue any man who impugns my honesty. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I move we adjourn this meeting. We cannot do so at this point, Mr. Halliday. Why not? Because we have other claimants for the prize. I have received a number of letters. Perhaps one of them can repeat the true remark. Oh, Mary, Mary, we're doomed. We'll be disgraced. Letter number three. You are far from being a bad man. Signed, Inglesby Sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, but you are far from being a very bad man. Oh, oh, which incorruptible is that? <laughs> Nicholas Whitwell. <laughs> You are very far from being a very bad man. Well, it became a picnic after that. The house was in hysterics. One by one, the incorruptibles were stripped naked. Figuratively speaking, that is. Mary, we're, we're going to be disgraced. Oh, Mary. Why did we do it? I don't know what ever got into me, Edward. Oh, forgive me. He's... He's saving us for last. I know it. Oh, Mary. Oh, all I ever had was my good name. Now, I don't even have that. Oh, pray. That's all we have left. Pray that Burgess will be merciful. Yes. Yes, let us pray. Ladies and gentlemen... I believe that's all. Uh, Mr. Burgess, how many of those letters did you receive? Uh, Nineteen. Well, sir, I've been holding count, and you only read eighteen. Oh, did I? Uh, well, I, I must have been mistaken. I guess it was only eighteen. Eighteen? We have nineteen incorruptibles in Hadleyburg. But only one of them is the genuine article. Only one is truly as advertised. I propose a cheer for the cleanest man in town. The only so-called important citizen who didn't try to steal that money. Edward Richards. And now I shall read the other letter in the sack. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no test remark. 
Nobody ever made one. What? Order, order, please. Order. There was no beggar, no contribution. At one time, I passed through your town. I was offended by your lofty, snobbish pretensions. I was insulted by your overbearing vanity. I decided to discover if your vaunted integrity was genuine. And now you have seen what I have done. I'm sure I caught every last man to whom I wrote that letter tipping off the test remark. That's right. He did, down to the last man. Well... The contents of the sack belong to all who claimed it. Now, wait a minute. You mean these shoppers get the gold after all? Order, 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 please, ladies and gentlemen. I must abide by the instructions. And so I shall now cut open the sack and distribute the contents among... among... What is it, Mr. Burgess? Friends... This isn't gold. These are just gilded pieces of lead. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Chairman! (laughs) Mr. Chairman! (laughs) Yes, yes, Jack. Mr. Chairman, (laughs) I propose we auction off the sack and give the proceeds to the one honest, incorruptible left. Ed Richard. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Come on. All right. May I uh, speak? My name is Stevenson. Oh, yes. Mary, it's that Mr. Stevenson. Stevenson? Oh, uh, do any of you gentlemen know me? I am a collector in rare coins and curiosities. And I think I might buy this collection. And on it, engrave the names of the 18 incorruptible. I do. Uh, sir, I am returning, and I warn you, I will show you to an inch of your life. I beg you, sir, not to threaten me. I know my rights. You and anyone else can prevent me from gaining possession by outbidding me. <laughs> One thousand dollars. Oh. oh. Three. Oh. Keep it up, gentlemen. Keep it up. Oh. Remember, the proceeds oh. go to Ed and Mary Richard. Oh. Okay. Oh. Minus, oh. Minus, oh. Minus, oh. minus, minus, oh. minus, oh. minus. Oh. Do I hear it? Do I hear it? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. I must All confess. Right. Oh. Oh. I don't know what oh. to oh. I won't be tempted oh. again. Oh. I won't. Oh. It's so much money. We could be comfortable for the rest of our lives. Mary, Mary, I should confess, but I can't. Burgess, why did he save me? Maybe I'm not the letter. Twenty-five. Thirty-six thousand dollars. I'm going to confess. Thirty-six thousand dollars. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. I hear. Hey, will the auctioneer? Will the auctioneer go out a slight intermission? I must consult with with Will. Have a quiet time. Quiet time. During which time the 18 incorruptibles got together to pool their resources and finally they bought the sack for $50,000. Oh, Edward, I'm exhausted. Uh, Well, finally we can go to bed. Oh, I won't be able to sleep. I, I know. Fifty thousand oh. dollars. Mary, I... I can't believe what happened. We'll be given the check in the morning. You'll believe it then. Suppose... Suppose... Suppose what? Suppose this is Mr. Burgess's way of getting revenge. He was accused of adultery. But I knew it was a lie. I could have saved his reputation... I didn't. Edward. No, Mary. Now he's waiting. Don't you see? He's toying with me. Let the town praise me, and then he'll produce that letter and destroy me. Edward, you don't know that. No. I'm going to confess everything. Where are you going? Out. Uh, I'm going to tell everyone I see that I tried to steal the money, too. Edward! We thought he was mad. He went through the streets bareheaded, without a coat. Stopping people, knocking at doors. We thought the ordeal had been too much for him. But no, he convinced us. And then Hadleyburg really fell. Our last incorruptible was gone. Literally. Because that night he caught the fever that killed him. And I was with him at his last hour. 
The Reverend Burgess came to visit. Edward, I, I would never have betrayed you. You would. You would have. I destroyed the letter you sent. I wanted to save you. You, uh, after all, saved my life once by warning me. No, no. You were angry with me because I could have cleared your name. But you see, I was afraid and you... And, and you hated me for it. You were waiting for revenge. Poor Edward. You couldn't have cleared me. You had no real evidence to offer. You see, I was to blame. I was guilty. Like everyone else, I'm only human. Like everyone else, I too could be tempted. Hadleyburg is a well-corrupted village. I guess there isn't an awful lot more to tell. Hadleyburg had its name changed by special permission of the legislature. And what its new one is, uh, I won't say. But we're a town now, like other towns, neither better or worse. But at least, we're human, which is about as good or as bad a thing as you can say about anyone. Thank you kindly for your attention. Thank you, Jack Halliday. This has been a visit into the Mark Twain country of Hadleyburg. And you can find a Hadleyburg almost anywhere you look, even in your own hometown. And you can look for me to be back here in just a few moments. Temptation. The temptation of the flesh and the temptations of the spirit. Who can withstand them? We human beings are so ill-equipped. We have so many desires, so many conceits, so much vanity. And so every time you deplore a justifiably condemnable offense, take consolation in this one thought. Given the foibles of the human race, we can be glad things aren't a lot worse. Mark Twain settled for that. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Ralph Bell, Joan Shea, Earl Hammond, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>